Hey guys, what's up? Power Boxing here. So I just watched Chris Algieri versus Errol Spence. It was a good fight, a good performance. Uh, I thought Errol Spence was going to win, but I thought that Chris Algieri was going to test him a bit. And uh, no, he didn't really test him. Chris Algieri did land a couple good right hands. One of the right hands I do remember when Chris, when Errol Spence had uh, Chris Algieri in a vulnerable spot on the ropes, uh, all of a sudden uh, Chris Algieri like threw a lead right and it woke Spence up because I seen his eyes go wide right when he landed. And I think it was just a wake up punch saying, because Errol Spence, Errol Spence thought he was in complete control, but that right hand woke him up a bit. But, like I said, uh, other than the couple uh, right hands, some left hooks, Chris Algieri landed. Uh, nothing to really bother Spence, really. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was a good performance by Errol Spence. I thought going into this fight, Chris Algieri was definitely a good fight for him to build his resume. Chris Algieri is a good name, a good boxer, and he's uh, he's a tough guy. So, I thought... It was a good step up for Errol Spence to build his uh, reputation. Definitely not too quick. Like, not stepping up too much. Like, going right to the top, top guys. Uh, like, say, let's say just Keith Thurman or someone. Or, like, something like that. That would be maybe too quick of a step up. But Chris Algieri was definitely a big step up for him. He passed it. Chris Algieri apparently tweaked his leg, he said, in the fight or something like that. He hurt his leg. But he doesn't want to take anything away from Errol Spence. Um, so yeah, I thought Errol Spence definitely... It's going to make the welterweight, uh, the welterweight division very exciting with that performance. What impresses me mo most about Errol Spence is... Uh, I know I criticized him before, but I wasn't criticizing him because of his skills. I was criticizing him because everyone was jumping the gun on him. Like mostly the Floyd Mayweather fan community and saying, oh, he's the next biggest thing. He's he's the best in the division, even though he fought no one. Until tonight, he really didn't fight anyone. So, uh, but that was my criticism. It wasn't of his skills or anything. It was just because he fought no one uh, really until now. But he showed that he is good. Uh, and what press impressed me most about Errol Spence is his body punching his power and the, the, the leverage he gets on his shots. He gets a lot of power. He winds up and he gets a lot of power on those those hooking shots. Uh, and uh, to the body especially. And that's what impressed me most about him. Uh, but it's hard to say how he's going to do when he faces the top, top guys. But I think he'll do okay. Considering what he did to Chris Algieri. Uh, he, he did stop him. Uh, in my opinion, Chris Algieri would have kept on getting up if the rep didn't stop it. So really, when the announcer says he couldn't, he got up when he was facing Manny Pacquiao, but he couldn't get up against Errol Spence. That's that's a lie because the ref stopped it. He didn't give Chris Algieri to get up from that knock that, that last knockdown. He would have got up. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why they kept on really. I, I guess they're trying to build him. They kept on saying Amir Khan couldn't do it, Pacquiao couldn't knock him up, but really. That has nothing to do with anything. Uh, like, he definitely has, he has really, he's he's definitely, his best attributes are his power, he's young and he's hungry. That's my, that's my thing. And uh, really, I know the Floyd Mayweather community likes him so much, I guess because he's associated with Mayweather, but really, his style is nothing like Mayweather's, so... This is the kind of fight, fighter I like to see. Like the fight I seen tonight, I like to see the aggressiveness of Errol Spence. That was good to watch. Complete opposite of Floyd Mayweather. So don't know why the Floyd fans would uh, would like him so much. But anyway, there's biasness in boxing. Why people like some fighters and then they don't like other fighters. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that. The fans of boxing definitely are racist and biased. Uh, but I think if you're a fighter yourself, you're not as much racist really because you respect each other. You should respect other fighters if you're a fighter yourself and it doesn't matter what, like who's in front of you. Like you gotta, you respect them, 
know what I mean, for getting in that ring. But the fans, different story. They're, they're keyboard warriors. They don't, they've never fought. They've never been in a boxing uh, ring in their life. And you get racism and biasness. But from what I've seen, actual fighters themselves seems like they respect all colors. You know what I mean? It's not like when you go, when you look at like white fighters, they got black fighter fighters, sparring partners helping them. They got black coach. They're all working together to reach a goal. So I think I think they get along good. Same with uh, like say like the black fighter has a white coach or a white sparring partners. They're helping them. They're you know what I mean, it doesn't matter. But the fans is a different story. Uh, they like a fighter for a certain thing. Has nothing to do with anything, but you know what I mean, like bias and stuff like that. But anyway, like I said, that's a whole different topic. But all I gotta say is, like, I think it's the style, right? Like people say, like if Floyd Mayweather was white, then we would like him. But that's not true at all to me because. It's just like, for me, it's just like Klitschko. Klitschko's white. He's boring. I don't like him. It doesn't matter if he's black or white. He is white. He's he's white, and I still don't like him because he's boring. So that's pretty much it. It wouldn't matter if Floyd Mayweather is white or not. Uh, and obviously, outside the ring, he doesn't help me liking him either. But that's a different story. But anyway, uh, Errol Spence, I like what I've seen. I like the body punching. I like the power. He's definitely a threat to anyone at the top, I think. Um, and, uh, it makes it exciting. I think the very exciting welterweight division, you got now Errol Spence, uh, in the top, uh, guys to be mentioned. He called out Kel Brooks. You can tell he's hungry. He's calling out the, uh, one of the top guys, Kel Brook. Uh, and, uh, he's his number one mandatory for Kel Brook, I think, for the IBF. And then you got Keith Thurman. You got Sean Porter. Danny Garcia, um, Amir Khan, if he does, if he beats Canelo, then Amir Khan, uh, Timothy Bradley, uh, Terrence Crawford, if he, he can possibly move up and uh, be a threat too. So the Wilder Weight division is coming back. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of, since uh, Pacquiao and Mayweather are out of picture for now, and pretty much, they are pretty much out of the picture. If they do come back, it will just be to fight each other. Or something like that. Or, you know, I mean, it's not going to be... They're not going to be in the picture permanently anymore, really. They'll come back for maybe one or two fights. But pretty much the young people are moving. Like I said, it's the newer generation now going to start. So, it looks like uh, it's a packed division. If I have to say the top guys in the welterweight... After this performance, you never... Uh, you can't... Errol Spence definitely could be the be the best at welterweight. You never know. But for me, the best welterweight in the world is Timothy Bradley. He's the most accomplished one. And he's proven it. He's only lost to Manny Pacquiao. And he's beaten many good championship-level fighters. Uh, so for me, Timothy Bradley, uh, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter are my top three probably. But... Errol Spence will definitely give a run for their money for sure. Uh, you would think that he would uh, with this performance against Chris Algieri, but you never know. Um, you never know. Chris Algieri is no uh, Sean Porter. He's no uh, uh, Timothy Bradley. So, you know what I mean? And uh, if Chris Algieri leg was hurt that bad, we don't know. Maybe that made his performance look better, but... You can't take any anything away from Errol Spence. The game plan, the power, and the uh, body punching was great. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the welterweight, uh, see how things play out. And we'll see. Uh, with It's it's interesting because I want to see who Al Heyman's going to sacrifice. Um, we, are, we already know he pushed the Keith Thurman, Sean Porter fight. That was good. And... Uh, but whoever wins that fight, maybe versus Errol Spence, that'd be good. But it's it's getting interesting, and uh, yeah, it's gonna see it's gonna be interesting how things play out. Uh, 
And, uh, yeah, so let me know what you thought about that fight. And, uh, yeah, the other fight, the co-main event, uh, the two uh, light heavyweights, uh, what's his name, Brown and uh, that other, I forget his last name now, weird last name, but um, I think he's like Yugoslavian or something like that. Uh, the Yugoslavian guy got robbed pretty well. Uh, the first round, he got he got called a knockdown. It was clearly not. I don't know how the ref didn't see that. And the judges gave it to Brown, so... Anyway, I really don't know uh, how the how the judges scored that one. Uh, it was with if that knockdown didn't get called, it would have been a draw still. But still, that would have been bad for the Yugoslavian guy. So it was a robbery, in my opinion. Uh, so the Brown guy's undefeated still, but really, it's a fake undefeated now. But anyway, good night. Uh, those two fights were very good. The Steve Cunningham fight. Uh, and, uh, the other guy, um, what's his name, uh, Polish guy, that was probably the most boring fight of the night, but, the uh, the light heavyweight fight, the uh, Yugoslavian guy and the Brown guy, uh, like his last name's Brown, I forget his first name now, uh, that was a good fight, and the Chris Algieri, Errol Spence, maybe it wasn't as good as that, because it wasn't competitive, Errol Spence pretty much totally controlled the fight, so in that sense it was boring, but... Good, per exciting performance one-sidedly by uh, Errol Spence. So let me know what you guys think of the fights. And thanks for watching. Power Boxing, Power and Down.